Do you make chronic bad life decisions? Do you have an insufferable need to waste money on the dumbest shit possible? If so, I have a product for you. Meet Analog Darkroom Enlarging. Fuck, I picked this up uh, a few weekends ago now. I drove out to Vassar, Michigan, uh, fairways out and pretty much in the middle of nowhere, just farms as far as you could see. Um, I got it for about $100, including everything else that it came with, timer, power supply, uh, the receiver here, uh, thing for on the bed, which I still need to clean and fix up because it's really fucking gross right now, a contact printer, a Cibachrome drum tank for working on that Bezler motor there, which I don't think is even in frame right now, and a few dip trays as well for like 3x4 or 3x5 kind of image sizes. Now, about this specifically, this is a Nikkor System 6 7 uh, or 6X7. And it can, as the name implies, hold up to a 6x7 medium format image, or negative, or positive, in this carrier here, and shine it down onto the bed properly at the right crop ratio, assuming you have the right carrier and the right lens. Those are two very important bits here. Right now, I've only got the 35mm carrier and the 35mm compatible enlarging lens, but it's done a pretty damn good job so far, and I've done nothing but make prints pretty much this entire goddamn weekend because I have no life, and this is a problem. This is a cry for help. Stop me, please. I really didn't know how to use this sort of thing, and I just sort of stumbled around it for the first evening or so, just kind of acquainting myself and figuring out what I needed to do, uh, period. I was thankful that it came with a manual, but uh, like a lot of manuals from that time, some of them could be a little lackluster, much like today. Like most manuals. I hate manuals. They fucking suck. With a little bit of, of effort, I figured out what the hell I was doing, and I got some pretty good prints for my first tries at least. I got this here, and this was an exposure test for a black and white reel I shot for my brother's uh, Eagle Scout initiation. So I kind of laid everything in the contact printer and tried to do it old school, lab style. That was pretty fun, I gotta admit. A little frustrating to get a hold of, but that actually did help me figure out contrast and brightness for using this to make real proper full-size enlargements. So I've got this one on my wife. Um, I took this, this is one of the last images actually on that 35 mil roll I shot the other day for my brother's Eagle Scout thing. And I gotta admit, it didn't turn out absolutely terrible. I tried to do some hand dodging here and there, uh, especially right around the overalls, just to try and keep her as light compared to the background as possible, just to kind of make the image pop a little bit. I might have gone a little bit too far, but she's absolutely glowing. So I guess today, I kind of want to just give you a rough walkthrough of the sort of thing that I do with this Nikkor here, and kind of how I've been using it at the very least, because I'm a schmuck, and chances are you're a schmuck too and you don't know what the fuck you're doing, much like I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So why don't we just stumble through this together? Sound like a plan? So I guess first thing that I'll start with is something that I really didn't understand how to use myself at all. I got this thing and went, what is this jank ass looking microscope dental tool fusion bullshit? And it is insanely helpful. Let me show you. So to show you how this little focus scope works. And that's what this is, by the way. This is called a focus scope here. And its primary job, essentially, is to check whether or not the image falling right here, where it stands, is in focus or not. To show you how this focus scope works, we're gonna need to load some film first, right? So what we're gonna wanna do is pull out the film carrier, We'll set this off to the side for a minute. We'll grab our film, just make sure. I put mine like this, upside down, like so. And then gently close, little hinge here. 
you kind of want to make sure that your film, at least for the Nikkor here, is hitting these pegs here. Or is at least in front of them. And you can move this around quite a bit as you need. There we go. So now, we just kind of jiggle this around and get roughly the cell that I want in line. We'll give this a bit of an inject. Okay, so our negative is now loaded. I've got a little bit of Portrait 800 I shot on the FG20 a while ago in here now. So what we're gonna wanna do is dim the lights. This is gonna fuck up this shot, by the way. Actually, you know what? To better illustrate this, I'm gonna make this into a dark room real quick. I've got a big piece of cardboard here that I just shove in the fucking window, and it makes the room very dark, as you're about to see. Oh my. <laughs> okay, all the light's gone out, pretty much. Sweet Jesus. And now, you're gonna see... Light. Wow. Can you even see that? Okay, we're going for a little trip. So, we have here our negative. This is actually a discard piece of photographic paper that I use essentially to get a general idea of the size of the print that I'm going to be making. It kind of helps me get the cropping adjusted and everything. So, let me show you a bit about this focusing scope because I think this was probably the weirdest part to me and the part that I understood the least until I started using it. Using the focusing scope is pretty simple. All you have to do, get your scope lined up here, sitting on your little flat surface where the photo will be projected to. You bring your eye up to it and you look through. And you are going to see the same color as what you see down here, this nice amber emulsion if you're using color neg, obviously. And looking through this scope allows you to see the grain structure of the film. And if the grains are visible, if you can see each little particle of silver that is stuck to this emulsion, then you've got the image perfectly in focus. So essentially, line it up, kind of move it around and see, it can be kind of awkward to get it into the right position at the very least for me personally. But once you do, you just skate around the image a little bit and double check that most points on the negative are in focus. And once you're done with that, you have a perfectly in focus image ready to print. Now, the next big thing that was kind of confusing for me at least personally when I was first working with this were these color adjustment knobs. No matter what I did, they just seemed to spin freely, which didn't really make a lot of sense to me. You know, you wouldn't expect this sort of thing to just go from, you know, 100 to 0 again and wrap around. You'd expect it to stop. Well, what I didn't realize is there is a conveniently hidden little knob button thing, but it's not a knob, actually. It's a pull lever. And what happens is, pulling on it engages, eh, engages the color knobs. So what's happening behind the scenes? See, I took this apart thinking that perhaps someone had put a black and white heads mixing chamber inside of this. Oh, and aside, the mixing chamber is a small foam, typically like white styrofoam lined metal box that has these color filters inside of it. Doing this pushes a spring-loaded screw back and forth with the gel filter. That big styrofoam white insulation kind of allows the light to bounce uh, repeatedly before hitting some sort of like frosted glass collimating lens or something, just to mix everything down instead of having random beams of light colored different colors, which could give you an uneven lighting weird shit going on down here. The mixing chamber basically takes all of the components of light here, these filters, and allows it to mix back down to a single color coming out here. But when you engage this, your knobs now will go from 0 to 170. They stop at 170, and they hit a detent at 0. So you can quickly, even in the dark, 
with no lights on and with this unit off, you can zero out everything and disable your color filters should you choose to do so. Now, the other big thing for this is focusing and actually setting the size of your enlargement. For setting the size of your enlargement or the rough size of your enlargement, simply twist this knob here on the head joint until it's loose and then it will just raise and lower. Pretty easily, I do need to oil mine a tad, but pretty easily. It's fairly light for how heavy this head is as well. So next thing, after you've gotten your head set at the height you want, you can go ahead and focus it using this bellows knob here. And you get like a nice large print format camera bellows here that leads up to the enlarging lens. And, you know, using this here, the focus scope that we talked about earlier, and this, you can go ahead and get your image perfectly crisp. This ring here can either move in stepped increments like this, where it clicks and quantizes to each f-stop, or pulling out, you get full, fine, free control over the aperture size. Obviously, it's just like any other camera. Higher aperture is going to give you a slightly softer image, but everything's going to be at maximum brightness and a slightly lower aperture, somewhere I've heard from like 8 to 11-ish, is pretty much what you'd want for a fairly crisp image. So, overall, I absolutely love this thing so far, especially for 100 bucks for a darkroom 6x7 printer. Not bad. Gotta admit, pretty cool. And with how cheap photographic paper is, I think I got the 25 sheet multi-grade from Ilford for like 13 bucks, 12.95, some shit like that. Comes with 25 sheets. That's so cheap. That's fantastic. I love it. I'm really bad at making prints though, so it turned into more of like a 12 sheet pack, but yeah, you know, you fuck up sometimes. Anyways, I plan on showing a bit more of the process uh, in detail, but I just wanted to make a short little video here since I can't find a lot specifically about the Nikkor System 6X7. And that's a bit of a shame because it's a fairly affordable and larger that seems to have somewhat common parts. And I see them on eBay for, you know, 50 to 100 some bucks. Not too bad for an enlarger. Uh, anyways, I've been Dylan, you've been watching this, and, I don't know, go do something else with your free time. What the fuck are you doing here? Get out of here. <laughs> do I have enough recording time? Oh, thank fuck. 7%.